We are jumping back into John's Gospel today and this section I've called He Must Become Greater. If you are new to this YouTube channel, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the like button, share this with others, um, and share it with folks who you think might find these videos helpful as we dig into God's Word together. As always, I do encourage you to read this passage for yourself a few times just to familiarize yourself with what's happening in the text. Look out for um, repeated ideas or key words. As we've seen throughout this gospel, the Apostle John has written to give us evidence. Evidence about Jesus. And this evidence calls for belief in Jesus. And this belief leads to life through Jesus. We have seen some amazing evidence so far in the gospel and we've seen many people trusting in Jesus already, following him. In the previous section we met Nicodemus who came and questioned, questioned Jesus and Jesus said those amazing words, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So the focus has been on Jesus, looking at this one who is the light shining in the darkness. And now in this section, the, the camera angle changes, if you were, and it focuses in on John the Baptist. And we learn a very important lesson from John. And the main tool I used to see the structure is what is called the narrative plot arc tool. So I'll just show you how I worked that out in this section. So in the structure, we, we're looking for the setting, the conflict, the climax, the resolution, and then the new setting. And this is a really useful tool just to try and see how the story is structured. And where you see that point of climax, that is uh, where the emphasis of the whole story lies and where the emphasis of then your teaching, your sermon, should lie. So as we look at the, the setting, uh, I saw that in uh, chapter 3, verse 22 to 24, where we see Jesus and then John the Baptist are both baptizing in the countryside in two different places. So that's our setting, these two groups baptizing. And the conflict starts arising in this, um, this setting particularly in verses 25 to 26, we see the Baptist's disciples are jealous that Jesus' popularity is eclipsing the Baptist's popularity. Uh, so that is the conflict. Is this actually a problem? What's going on here, John? And then we see the climax of the story in John the Baptist's words in uh, verse 27 to 30. And we see here climatically that John understands his role. He knows that he has come to humbly declare that Jesus is the Great One. And we see that particularly in verse 30 where he says, He must become greater, I must become less. That was John the Baptist's role. And then the story resolves um, from verse 31 to the end, verse 36, as the Baptist then shows why Jesus must become greater. And it's because he is already greater. And then the new setting is given in chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, where the Pharisees are introduced and this opposition to Jesus grows. And so Jesus moves to a new place through Samaria, which is the setting for our next story. Um, but just looking at this climactic point, as John highlights his role, that he knew exactly what his role was, uh, that's where the focus of the story needs to be. Looking at John being one pointing to Jesus and saying, he must become greater, I must become less. So the narrative plot arc is a useful tool just to see the structure of a story. And then also in narrative like this, it's worth just looking out for the key characters. And Jesus is a character. In the beginning, he's in the spotlight. Throughout the rest of the story, he's being spoken of, um, but he's still a key character to focus in on. He's not doing the action here. 
he's being spoken of by John's disciples and by John himself. He's spoken of in verse 29 as the bridegroom. And this is picking up on Old Testament prophecies where in a number of places, uh, one of those being Isaiah 62 verse 4 and 5, um, Hosea 2 verse 16 to 20, um, God's people are spoken of as the bride of the Lord. And John is picking up on that idea and he's saying, well, the bridegroom is here. Um, those prophecies are about to be fulfilled. And then there are a whole lot of important bits of evidence that are given about Jesus, the Son of God, here that just build our view of him and see why he must be believed in. As we saw, this idea of belief is a key theme in John's Gospel, and it is belief that leads to eternal life um, through the Son. And the other theme, evidence, you can see is used throughout John's Gospel with words like uh, testimony or testified, uh, people speaking about what they have seen and heard. And so as we go through the Gospel, um, we're looking out for those kinds of words that just show this evidence which leads to belief in Jesus, um, which leads to life through Jesus. Another character in this specific section who's worth looking out for is John. Now this is not John the writer of the Gospel, this is John the Baptist. And we see John understanding his own role in this section. Uh, he sees himself as a friend of Jesus. Um, one who now must become less, less prominent because his greatness isn't the greatness that people need to know about. It's the greatness of the bridegroom, the one who John had said in chapter um, 1, verse 29, where he pointed to Jesus and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John knew that that Lamb of God was now here and people needed to know about him. Just another repeated theme that jumps out in the opening section is obviously John the Baptist. Uh, his name implies that he was baptizing people and this baptism here is linking with the, the Old Testament purification rites. Uh, at this stage it hadn't yet been given its uh, full New Testament significance but people were coming to John um, and the, he was calling them to repent because the Kingdom of God was at hand and people were doing that. They were repenting and this baptism was an outward sign um, of that inward reality, an outward sign that they had indeed repented. And that's what's happening. And then the conflict rises as we see, well, both Jesus and John, or Jesus' disciples at least, which we'll see in chapter 4 verse 2. So 4 verse 2, John the writer of the gospel clarifies that it was actually Jesus was overseeing and his disciples were the ones doing the baptizing at this point. That both Jesus and his disciples and John and his disciples are baptizing. And John's disciples look in and they say, well, look, everyone's going to him. Now that's an exaggeration because verse 23 told us that people were going to be baptized um, with John too. So not everyone was going, but there was a jealousy growing in John the Baptist's disciples. And John demonstrates beautifully that this, this uh, jealousy has no place in the ministry because he knows that the work he's doing has been received by God and he can only do what has been given to him from heaven. And it's a great teaching point that John the Baptist is pointing away from himself and saying that Jesus is the one who must become greater. That's a great motto for the Christian life um, that all of us could, could adopt. From verse 31 to the end of the chapter, um, it's as if John, the writer of the Gospel, is summing up so much of what we've seen already. 
and he is reminding us of big things that we've seen about Jesus. Uh, he says he must become greater because he, he is already greater. He's the one who has come from above. Uh, so he is above all. And we see that above all is repeated twice. He is above all. There's no one greater than him. So he must become greater. His greatness needs to be increasingly known. And why else? Well, he's the one who God the Father has sent. He speaks the words of God. God has given him the spirit without limit. If you look in the Old Testament, God gave his spirit in a portion of his spirit to many people to achieve his purposes. But to Jesus, God the Father has given God the Son the spirit without limit. Nothing has been held back. And we see the Father loves the Son. He has placed everything in his hands, absolutely everything, all power, authority, or wisdom, or strength, they've all been given to Jesus. That's why he must become greater, I must become less. Jesus is already greater. He's come from above. He has been sent by God the Father with the words of God the Father, with the full spirit of God at work in him and through him. The Father loves him, has placed everything in his hands. So he must become greater. I must become less. And why is all of this so important? Why does John give us this evidence? Well, verse 36 fleshes that out for us, gives us the reason. We see these ideas of belief and life come out here. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. That's why he must be, become greater. His greatness needs to be made known because those who believe in him can have life. We are given the but statement here though, the other side, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. God's wrath remains on them. So there's a flip side of this coin. For those who don't believe, for those who reject, they cannot have life. Life is only found through the Son. And if you don't believe in Him, you remain under God's wrath. And that's why John was saying He must become greater. We don't want anybody to remain under God's wrath. So we need to make His greatness known so that more and more people will believe in Him and receive life. That the wrath of God will be taken from them. A great cross reference to dig into for this section. Um, could be Philippians 2, verse 6 to 11, where we see this great one made himself nothing. He humbled himself in order that he could deal with the wrath of God, that he could die the death that sinners deserve to die, so that those who believe in him can have life. So this is an important section for all of us as God's people to dig into, because it helps us to remember our role. If we get our role wrong, it can be very dangerous. Um, it can make us jealous. But rather, we need to remember that the heart of our role is to do the work that has been given to us from heaven. Uh, Jesus has prepared good work for us to do, and we are to do that work. This one who comes from heaven has given us work to do. And as we remember that we can only do what he's given us to do, we know that the focus of this role for John and for every follower of Jesus is the same. We want Jesus' greatness to become increasingly known. So we need to pray that we would, in a sense, get out of the way, that we wouldn't be the focus in any way as we do the work that God has given us to do, but we would be wanting to make Jesus' greatness known. So as you dig into this passage more yourself, as you teach it to others, let's pray that God would help us to take on this attitude, to adopt this motto for our lives. He must become greater. I must become less. Well, God bless as you dig in further.